I am thrilled to announce and invite our keynote speaker tonight, Umesh Malibram, is the Vice President for Corporate Development at Affiliate Managers Group, AMG, the world's sixth largest investment management firm. Umesh has been with AMG for 15 years and he specializes in mergers and acquisitions. He heads up AMG's Canadian Investments. He is a board of director on a number of investment management firms, including Mutual Goodman, First and Gordon, and Payne and Montrose Barton. He is a graduate of the University of Waterloo in accountancy. He articled with Price Waterhouse Coopers and qualified as a chartered accountant in the 1990s. Umesh is very actively involved in the community, having served various roles with the Canadian Channel Chamber of Commerce and Canadian Channel Congress. Most recently, he co-founded the Center for Leadership and Innovation. You just uh, witnessed that today. A non-profit organization that focuses on coaching public speaking and leadership for kids ages 10 to 18 years. There are over 150 kids enrolled in this youth leadership program, quite an achievement, given it was founded less than three years ago. I'd like to welcome Umesh Valibram to the podium. So good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, three thanks for the kind words. It's an honor and a privilege for me to be uh, standing in front of you uh, and uh, to, to share a few words with you about uh, uh, overcoming the fear of failure. And uh, interestingly, three uh, called me about a month ago and said, uh, Umesh, can you uh, give the keynote address? In the excitement of it, I said, wow, wonderful. I, I'm, I'm really thrilled and honored to be delivering the keynote address. And then uh, that I had a nightmare that night. I woke up in a cold sweat. There are these 250 successful professionals, business people, looking at this politically challenged, tall, slightly obese, accountant by profession. Accountants, you know, always interesting and a lot of insightful things to say. And, uh, I mean, these are the same people, according to the U.S. Uh, research of medicine, who have the attention span of a goldfish, which is uh, less than eight seconds. So here you are, you're all of these people having an attention span that's less than eight seconds, and I'm supposed to be saying something inspiring to you all, an accountant of all people. And, uh, you know, I, I phoned three the next day, and I said, three, you know, are you sure that you want me, I can find better people to do this keynote speech and Sri wouldn't take no for an answer. And uh, he said, make sure you're doing it. So here I am, here I am to deliver the keynote speech. So I think why Sri had asked me to do this speech is uh, because of the professional success that I've achieved in the uh, financial services industry. Uh, I've been part of AMG for 15 years. Now I think most of you know the AMG, which is uh, the Mercedes-Benz. Unfortunately, I'm not part of that AMG. I like to think that we are the uh, AMG in the investment management world. And um, so just to give you a bit of a, who we are, um, we are the sixth largest firm, investment management firm in the world. and. Uh, we manage over 600 billion in uh, insurance, pension, and high net worth assets. And uh, you know, we are not that well known globally. Some of the bigger names uh, you may know are KKR, BlackRock, and Fidelity. Um, but we were only formed 20 years ago. 20 years ago. And within that time period, we've become the sixth largest investment management firm. Um, and I'm really proud to be part of that team that, that really made this success. Um, I actually, you know, after my uh, 
time in Pricewaterhouse being qualified as CA, I went into the mergers and acquisitions business. And, uh, and you know, I, I was instrumental in making a number of the large acquisitions that AMG has made over the time frame. And uh, interestingly, I mean, when we went public in 2000 at $20 a share, we were listed in the New York Stock Exchange, and we currently are trading at $210, almost tenfold. And uh, so I'm really part, proud to be part of that successful management team that has built AMG to be one of the largest investment management firms in the world. So to, to be honest though, when, when I was growing up, I didn't dream, I only dreamt to have this success in my life, but I never knew that it was achievable. And I think, uh, to begin with, I, I, I want to share my, one of my experiences that was really a turning point in my life. And it was, it was really the, the lesson that I learned about overcoming the fear of failure. And, uh, and really, that, that has really helped me success, be, be a successful professional. And, whether you are a student here, or whether you are a sales professional, or whether you are a business person, the, the ability to overcome and embrace the fear of failure can take you a long, long way and, and have a fulfilled and happy life. So I came to Canada when I was 14 years old. And uh, I was a shy, introverted kid, mostly kept to myself. And to make matters worse, uh, I had severe acne. As you can see, I still have the scars on my face. Um, being new to Canada, I was afraid to speak to people because of the fear of rejection. So one day I confided in my dad how miserable I felt. And lucky for me, I had a close relationship with my parents, and uh, and, and uh, unlike some parents who uh, call their children either Moku or Omaru or Osanian, um, my father's advice was, Umesh, can you see yourself living like this the rest of your life? And if the answer is no, if the answer is no, do something that is completely completely out of your comfort zone. So I took this advice and, and started exploring. So one day, this is when I was 14, um, I saw in this, uh, in my high school poster, you know, team in dire need of rugby players, no experience required, we will give you training. So, so that was interesting. So I thought, you know what, let me try. Let me try what it's all about. So. So he showed up for practice. So the, here is this scrawny Indian kid, or brown Sri Lankan kid. I think every other kid was at least 30 pounds heavier than me. And uh, to my surprise, I made the team. Actually, as a water boy, um, than, than, you know, for the, as being a rugby player. Um, so one day, we were playing a league collegiate, and it was rainy, foggy. Um, there were so many injuries on both sides. So we were leading by four points, and, and there were two minutes left to play. And uh, I was the last player sitting on the bench. So another one of our players were injured, so my heart started pounding. And my coach said, I have to go. I have to go into the game. So his advice to me was, stay calm. If the ball comes to you, don't do anything you know, fancy. Just kick the ball away. So low hand behold, I get into the game, the ball comes right to me. I was so nervous, my legs were shaking. Instead of kicking the ball forward, I kicked the ball high, high up in the air, backwards. So the opposition team caught the ball, they scored a try, and our team lost. As you can imagine, I was devastated, I was humiliated, I ran off the field. I didn't sleep all night. So we had team practice the next day. I debated about quitting rugby altogether. But I remember my father's advice. Do something out of your comfort zone. 
So I pulled all my bits together and showed up for practice an hour before the, the, the practice started. So I don't really have to face everyone at the same time. I'm so embarrassed. So the, my coach showed up 30 minutes after and then all the players showed up for practice and nobody really said anything about the game before. So we all practiced. And you know, at the end of the practice, all my teammates came together, lifted me up, and sang the, the rugby cheer, the, of a high school rugby cheer. And everyone was giving me a high five, they were hugging me and they were saying, Umesh, you know what, you're a real teammate, you're not a quitter. And we love that in you. And to me, it made a huge difference because I was so afraid of, I was living in the shell of being afraid of fear, of, of failing. But here I was, I screwed up so badly, but the team embraced me for my spirit, my, my willingness to, to you know, play as a team. And, and for me, that, that was a huge boost of confidence. And uh, it made me stronger, it got me out of that shell of that awkwardness, that shyness. And honestly, that, that really helped me in my professional success. I mean, I entered the investment banking field in the 90s where, you know, it was, I would go to conferences where I would probably be the only one or two visible minority in a sea of thousand people, you know, attending a conference. You know, there is always this fear, do I belong here when there is very hardly any visible minority, can I make it here? But that confidence that I got from that fear of failure really instilled in me, you know what, I belong here, I can do it. And that's really what built me the strength that I have today, the resilience to be able to face fear and, and overcome it. You know, I'll be, I mean, I'll be negotiating, you know, three, four hundred million dollar deals where, you know, the person is, across me is, is about, I'm sure, about 100, 200 times more worth than I am in terms of net worth. But, but the ability to face that person and feel that I am equal to that person and I'm not set down in negotiation, that's what helped me, that confidence, to be able to get a deal done. And, and that has gone a long way to, to who I am today. So coming back to the topic of overcoming a fear of failure, you know, many of us probably experience this one time or another. The fear of failing can be immobilizing. It can cause us to do nothing, therefore resisting moving forward. But when you allow fear to stop our forward progress in life, you are likely to miss some great opportunities along the way. Frankly, you're not human if you don't fear failure. So it is natural for all of us to fear failure, but in order to take risk, in order to embrace uncertainty, in order to seize opportunities, the way to overcome fear is that you have to learn to embrace fear, failure for the greater good for achieving your longer term goals. So that's why I have a lot of admiration for people in business, people in sales. You know that, uh, because failure stares in their eyes every day, you know that 80% of small businesses fail the first time. And you know that 90% of sales call that insurance people make never materializes in a sale. According to the, uh, the Wall Street Journal, actually, I read, I mean, um, insurance is the second most challenging sales profession in the world. Can anyone guess what the first one is? Sorry? Selling encyclopedias. So, and another thing about the insurance is that only 20% of the people stay in the insurance profession past 20, for past four years. It, it's a, it's a, it takes a lot of resilience to be able to be a successful agent in insurance. And, and, and that brings to my point, because, uh, because you know, people absolutely, and, and Sri said this, people don't want to talk about your death or disability, and, and absolutely that's what it, it is, uh, one of the toughest, toughest professions to take on. So, 
that's why I have a lot of admiration for for Sri. I, I you know I've known Sri for a long time, and to have what he has accomplished, you know, being a successful business person, and on top of it, you know, part of the million dollar round table, it, it is quite a remarkable achievement, and I think he deserves a big, big, big round of applause. And, and also to all the award winners, I mean, uh, you know, to be able to be in that top, top uh, sales category is an amazing uh, accomplishment. So, so th that brings me to the point of the fear of failure. And, uh, you know, when you look at it though, when you look at an infant, and how did we develop the fear of failure? When you look at a kid, when an infant was starting to walk, that kid is, keeps trying, even though the, the, the you know, even they, they fall, they keep, they keep getting up, they keep getting up, and they keep, until they finally learn to walk. But between that, and as we grow, depending on the environment that we are brought up in, you develop this, this, oh, this fear of failure. And that's why it's very important that overcoming the fear of failure is critically important at an early stage in life, and and one of the reasons uh, behind, you know, myself, uh, Sivan Ilangu, and Kumar Ratnam, we founded Center for Leadership Innovation, the Leadership Program, because interestingly, public speaking, you know, 40, 54 percent of North Americans surveyed ranked public speaking ahead of the fear of death. Imagine that! Imagine that! I love the quote from Jerry Seinfeld though, he said, most people would prefer to be lying in their casket rather than giving their eulogy. So people become nervous, I mean one of the reasons for public speaking is that, you know, I think as Ahilan demonstrated, uh, you know, you become nervous, you're afraid that you will fail, you will afraid that you will say the wrong thing or you will just freeze or you will mess up the speech. So it's absolutely important that you teach kids at an early age that, that the importance of taking risks, learn from the failure. And that's one of the goals of the Youth Leadership Program and getting them in front of the public speaking, getting them in front of the stage. They're going to make mistakes, but it's okay to make mistakes. And that's what we teach the kids in our program. And, and that's part of the public speaking activity that they, they learn. So uh, let me end my speech in a, on a personal story, my own personal experience about uh, using my confidence about the fear of failure. So, so I'm in my late 20s, uh, this was in the 90s, um, still single. You know, just like any typical Tamil mama's boy, I was extremely shy to speak to girls. I couldn't look them in the eyes. So I was uh, waiting for the perfect arranged marriage. You know, possibly if I'm lucky, me and a dowry may come with it. But um, So I was hoping that my parents will bring these uh, pictures of numerous pretty girls. And I would say yes to one, and then I live happily ever after. I'm sure a number of the men in the 40s and 50s here can, can relate to that. But unfortunately for me though, it didn't quite happen that way. So one day back in 2000, I was a volunteer at the Canadian Town of Congress, and, uh, and I saw this pretty girl walk into the CTC office. And something in me said that she is the one for me. But I didn't have the guts to approach her. But I didn't want to lose her because some other lucky guy at CTC may end up stealing her heart. <laughs> so I contemplated for a month about what to do, fearing that she will reject my, any of my advances. So one day, somehow I managed to get her email and I pulled up all my strengths together and sent a short and sweet note. Knowing full well, she will just blow me away. Because I didn't want to regret later on in life that I didn't at least try. So for my luck, she responded to my email. Well, after six days, though. 
uh, in, a, in a positive tone. And uh, one thing led to another, and uh, we've been married 13 years, and I have no regrets. So, so if there's anything, you know, from my story about the rugby, or, you know, my, my venture with my love life, um, you know, I think one thing you can take, whether you are a, or a student, or a sales professional, or, you know, uh, or a business person, I mean, if you're a student, you know, if you are afraid to speak in class, you know, take it one step at a time. Just lift your hand up next time your teacher asks a question. At least answer the question because at least you know that you tried, even though you may have failed, but you tried. If you're a salesperson, you know, if you've been procrastinating, you know, making the sales call, make sure, you know, at least try. You may fail, but it's a lesson to build in your longer term goal of being a top salesman. And same with the business person. Whether you're postponing about an investment or hiring a person, go with your gut. Because if you don't try, you will fail even more. And uh, I want to uh, end my speech with a, a very, one of my favorite quotes from Eleanor Roosevelt. She said, you know, life is too short to let fear make big decisions for you. Do one thing every day that scares you. So I hope you do something like that every day. One thing that scares you, and, and I guarantee you, you will have a much happier and fulfilled life. Thank you.